What we do at the St. Paul Center in emphasizing salvation history is not something extrinsic to the right. scriptures or alien to the lectionary. Right. I mean, it really is the, the, the divine code of the Old and New Covenants, but it is also something that was decoded when the lectionary was revised and promulgated back in the early 70s. And so I, I just think that we should step back and marvel. You know, it's sort of like looking at Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives and just seeing almost everything in one overview, you know. Mm -hmm. But next, you, you focused on something that was also rather panoramic in three or four verses, namely the call of God to Abram. And uh, on the one hand, you look backwards to the previous chapters in Genesis 10 and 11. In Genesis 10, you can see why all of the clans or the families of the earth are in view because two chapters earlier in Genesis 10, you have the so-called table of nations, right. but it really is the human family. Yeah. All 70 nations are descendants of Noah, but then the tragic fall comes in chapter 11, the Tower of Babel, as you know, which introduces idolatry into the very form of the social order, the tower right. itself. And so the scattering of all of these families and the confusion of their speech and their own spiritual darkness and idolatry, this is precisely what is sort of flipped in Genesis 12. This is how God is going to respond to the big human family that is now broken by idolatry through the faithful obedience of one man, Abram. He's going to become what well, he's going to get a land to become a great nation. But as you, as you emphasized, that's just the first step. Right. Yeah, because the, a great name is something more than becoming a great nation. It really is one nation being elevated over other nations in what we call a kingdom, like the United Kingdom with England on top, only it's a United Kingdom with Israel and the King of Israel ruling all of these other peoples. And that's what happens, you know, well, let me finish the third part of it too, because you, you summarized it so well, but at the same time, it's almost too much too quickly in the text itself. So a, a precise summary needs a kind of echo, right. you know. So first, a great nation. Second, a dynasty, a great name. And thirdly, all the families, all the clans of the earth are going to be blessed. That's precisely the reversal of the curse that came upon the human race in the Tower of Babel. You know, and to then step back and do what you just did, I, I, I wanted to I wanted to blow a trumpet, you know, but I didn't want to interrupt you either. But now I'm going to blow it again, you know, not only to see the, the panoramic overview of the readings for Lent, not only to see the sequence of salvation history, but to see in miniature how God had planted a kind of acorn with the Abrahamic covenant to anticipate the Mosaic covenant when they get the land and become a nation, the Davidic covenant when they get the great name, the very expression that is used in 2 Samuel 7, seven. Yeah, yeah, when the Lord announces through the prophet Nathan to David that you're going to get a dynasty, a monarchy, a kingdom, i.e. a great name. Yeah. But it's sort of like that's penultimate. What is really ultimate is precisely this blessing that will come down upon all of the families of the earth through Abram. Yeah. You know, and later on we can see Abram is the recipient of the covenant in Genesis 15. Abraham gets the new name when he is promised the kingship King shall come forth from your line, that is, Abraham and Sarah. That's only in 17. It wasn't in 15. And then when the father offers his only beloved son, he gets this covenant oath from God that through you all of the families of the earth will be blessed. But really, through your seed, Isaac. So the covenant with Abram is 15. The covenant with Abraham is 17. The covenant with Abraham's seed is in 22. You know, so the Abrahamic covenant is not a monolith. It's not just right. one thing with three rival versions the way historical critical scholars sometimes make it seem. It, it's more like an acorn, a sapling, and then a great oak tree. Yeah, absolutely. And the organic development is just breathtaking. Yeah, and, and what you're pointing out, uh, Scott, is that there is, uh, you know, a method to the madness of scriptural narrative. And it's not madness, okay? But there's a, a definite method. But often we're not uh, encouraged to see it or not trained to see it. My mother started me reading through the Bible uh, as a yearly, you know, practice, wow. a yearly discipline using, I don't know if you remember the daily walk. Oh, uh, I do, yes. yeah. Okay, so I started on the daily walk uh, when I was uh, 12 years old. 
And uh, so I'd read through the Bible every year. You owe your year. mother big time. I do owe my mother big time. <laughs> Absolutely. I should rise up and call her blessed. Uh, and I have. Yes. You know, I'll stand at the home and I'll, I'll get up at the family dinner table periodically and say, blessed. <laughs> God bless you. I like that. Yeah. Anyway, but getting back to this. Um, when we look at Genesis, and he, 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 uh, Abraham gets, uh, you know, introduced, as it were, out of the blue. Surely there's a backstory that was probably traditional for the early readers. Right. But this call of God culminates with all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you. And that raises two questions. Who are all the families of the earth and why do they need to be blessed? Weren't they blessed already? Right. And the previous chapters, as you point out, explain that. All the families of the earth are the descendants of the three sons of Noah given in Genesis chapter 10, breaking down into 70 different nations. Why they need to be blessed is, a, is a, uh, explained in the following chapter, Genesis 11, which is the Tower of Babel, where they build this siege tower to the heavens, as it were, to assault the divine realm. You know, a, a terrible thing. All of humanity gathered together with a single purpose, basically to shake their fist at God and defy him by building this tower. And God simply confuses their languages, and that's the end of that, and they're right. scattered, which is kind of pitiful. But now they're alienated from one another because they can't speak each other's language, and they're alienated from God. And it seems as if this whole divine plan to create a human family that is literally one big happy family has come to naught. And so what is a poor divinity to do now that uh, humanity is alienated from him and they're alienated from each other? Well, we can't do another flood. Uh, we did, we've done that already. <laughs> promised not to do it again. Right. So it's an infiltration strategy now. And God chooses Abraham, and through Abraham and his family, God's going to gently restore the blessing. 